Okay, we're back to do some more numerical calculations. It's going to be great. Now, I'm using here a thumbnail from my previous video. The previous video, uh, what? Let's just let's just backtrack here. Okay, so we started off number one, and I used an actual spring, and I added some mass to it. And from that, I got this model of a spring force. The more you stretch it, the greater the force. And then I, I let it oscillate up and down, and I, I found the period. And then I made a numerical model. And that numerical model, uh, in each little time step, I calculated the total force. There was a gravitational force pulling down and a spring force pulling up. And that made the momentum change. That changed the position, which changed the force. And boom, you get this oscillation. And we did it. It was great. Go back and watch it. So I'm going to do the same thing, but different. So in this case, what I'm going to do is to do the same thing, but use a visual model, a visual model for uh, the motion of the spring. So I'm actually going to model that make it's, you're going to be able to see it in 3D, this mass oscillating up on the spring. And I'm just going to use a cylinder for a spring. It's going to be fine. But once I do that, something magic is going to happen. Trust me, wait till the end, because magic's going to happen. And I'm starting this from scratch, so I might make a mistake, because that's the way real life is. We make mistakes in real life. This is the important thing right here, though, this, um, this spring force. Okay, I'm going to use the same values as before. Actually, I'm not going to use the same actual position, but I'm going to use the same spring constant, 7.51. I'm going to use the same mass, uh, and I hope I'll get the same period. There's one thing that we can check. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is start writing down some constants. Uh, I'm going to, this is one I have is g equals, uh, it's already going to be different. The vector 0, negative 9.80. Okay, so g is now a vector. That's important. L0 is the same thing. It was 0 0.042. K is the same. 7.51. The mass is the same. I'm going to do that in just a second because uh, I need to draw that. I think I think I'm good. So let's go ahead and put the top and the mass. Let's just make that. So I'm going to make um, top equals box, position equals vector. I'm just going to type this out. Um, I'm going to put it at position zero. Um, let's see if I'm stretching that out four centimeters. So zero point zero two zero, and the size is going to be. I'm going to go over this, chill out, don't worry. Um, let's say it is 0 0.03 by 0 0.001 by 0 0.02. Okay, stop. And let's save this. So this is going to be visual oscillator. Save. Let me run this and then I'm going to explain what I did. Okay, so because I might have made a mistake. Yeah, I made a mistake. Oh, see, it's right. Size equals. I was just so excited. It's not my fault. Okay, there. So you see, I have here a uh, 3D. I can actually rotate this around. I can zoom. I can rotate. It is in 3D, right? It's a box. It's my top where I'm going to connect my spring. So box is a 3D object in Python. And if you can, you can give it different parameters. In this case, I gave it the position, which is the center of the box. I gave it a size, which is the length, width, and height. And I didn't give it a color, so it made it like this gray color at the end. OK, I'm going to leave it like that. Now let's make the mass. So let's call it a ball. Ball equals an object of type sphere. I need to give it a position. And let's say it's going to hang down. Um, it was 0.26. It hung down about. I'm trying to get the the length from my previous case. So that was 0.4. So it hung. Let's say it's um hanging down uh, six centimeters. I'm just going to pick six. Okay. So the position is going to be vector zero. Then I'm going to be six below that. So that's going to be negative 0 0.040. And the this is a sphere, so it has a radius. And the radius is going to be, I'm picking 0 0.002. 
and it's going to be yellow. I might have picked a bad size. Let's just see. Oh, I'm, I'm that's pretty good. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Make it twice as big. There. Okay, so there's my mass and there's my um, plate. Now, since I have a ball, I can actually give it the mass. Ball.m is 0 0.1. I can also give it a momentum. Ball.p equals ball.m times vector 0, 0, 0. Okay, now I want to draw, you don't have to draw this, but let's draw a spring. There is a spring looking object in Python, but I'm going to use a, um, is that my fan? Yeah, well, I guess, I guess my computer's working. So let's see. Okay, so let's, it's going to be of a type object of a cylinder. A cylinder has two parameters. It has position, and that's the vector location of one end, and then it has axis, and the axis is the vector from the position to the end. So let's say the position is going to be top.pos. So the position is where the, this is. And then the axis is going to be ball.pos minus top.pos. And then I can give it a radius 2, and let's say it's smaller, 0 0.002. And let's see if it is gray. Check that out. Oh, I wanted it a little smaller. That's too thick. It's not bad, but... There. What do you think about that? Does that look good? Yeah. I'm pretty happy. Okay. So... I don't want to put the actual length in here. I've, I've described the, the location and the axis of this uh, spring cylinder based on the top and the mass so that it, yeah, I can redraw it. It doesn't, anywhere I put it, it'll work. Okay. I got K, I need T equals zero, I need DT equals 0 0.01, and now I'm ready. So let's say while T is less than uh, 10, let's run it for 10. Now I have to add a special statement, rate 100. So rate 100 tells the computer, since I'm visually animating this stuff, it tells it how many calculations to do every second. Don't do more than 100, okay? So since I have a time rate of 0 0.01, I should do 100 calculations per second. So a rate of 100 would make this in real time. So let's, let's put that there. Now the next thing I'm gonna, going to do is I need to calculate the spring force, calculate the total force. So I'm going to calculate this vector L. L is going to be... Uh, ball.pos minus top.pos. So it's this vector from, oh wait, it's no, it's from final minus initial. So it's from the top up here down to the ball. That's exactly what we want. Um, now I can calculate F spring. It's going to be equal to negative K times the magnitude of L minus L0 times the normal vector, the unit vector for L, so it's going to be norm L. I don't know if we've talked about vector operations before, um, but maybe, maybe I did. But the the mag is a built-in function in Python that finds the magnitude of a vector, and norm finds the unit vector for a vector. So those are built in. Now let's do f net. It's just going to be f s plus ball dot m times g. Now this is plus. Okay, because they're adding up the vectors. Yes, the gravitational force is in the negative y direction, but we're, we're adding those together. Okay, so don't subtract that. Now I can update the momentum. Ball.p equals ball.p plus f net plus f net times dt. And I can update the position. Ball.pos equals ball.pos plus ball.p times dt divided by ball.m. Now, I should just run this and show you that there's a, it's not going to do quite right because, oh, and <clears throat> I need to update time, but I also need to move this spring, right? I need to reposition the spring. I don't need to move the top, the beginning where it's connected, just down here. So I can say spring.axis equals L, right? Because it's from the top to the ball, which I already calculated. Isn't that cool? And t equals t plus dt. Save this. What are the chances that this runs? 
I don't know. Maybe an error. Probably an error. Let's run it anyway. Yep, something happened. I did this same exact error. I did that same thing in the last problem. I said K parentheses mag. I didn't explicitly say times. There you go. Check that out. It zoomed out so you could see a little bit. So let's change this to make it a little bit less stretched. Let's say 0.3. Run it thin, see what that looks like. It's still kind of big. Let's say 0. Point oh, maybe it's stretched too far, not far enough. Huh. It seems like it's offsetting really high. K mass. Okay, that's fine. But the period looks good. So let's see, I had a natural length of 0 0.04, so that would put this at negative 0.4. Let's put this at negative 0.4 and see what happens. It's still oscillating a lot. I, I just feel like there's something wrong. Huh. Why is it oscillating so far? Oh, this should be 0 0.02. That's too below. No? Ah! That's 2. 4. The natural length is 4. Hmm. Okay. Let's just, let's just carry on. Okay. Let's just double check. Let's just check here. F1 equals G curve. I'm not even going to put labels on it. Let's make a plot. F1 dot plot. Uh, T ball dot POS dot Y. That'll, that'll help us a little bit. Okay, it looks like it's doing okay. I mean, it, I think that's right. I just didn't want it to oscillate so much. Oh, you know what? I have to let it hang down even further, I think. Because that's where the equilibrium position is much lower. See, uh, the equilibrium position is at negative, oh, right on here, negative, right in the middle here. So this is. This is negative 0.2. This is negative 0.28. Oh, it goes really low. That's why. 0.2. So let's say this is it's stretched on a little bit further. Um, just double check right here with the spring. Okay, the, I'm getting the same period, so that's good. So let's just change this to 1. Let's try that. Okay, yeah, that makes much more sense. Okay, it has the same period of oscillation. I just didn't have it stretched down far enough. That's all. Okay, we are good to go, people. I'm going to put this even bigger. 1.6. See what happens then. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I got it. Change it to 1.3. Okay. I'm happy. Now for the magic. I told you there'd be magic. I'm going to do one thing up here. So up here, I'm going to, in the ball properties, I'm going to go over here and add on the property, make trail underscore trail equals true, capital T-R-E. Watch what happens. You won't be able to see too much, but it leaves behind a trail. Yeah, there you can see the trail. Now watch this. Ball.pos is, I'm, what if I put it what if I pull it off to the side a little bit? Let's say 0 0.05, and I'm going to run it. What the heck? Look at that. See, so now it's swinging back and forth and moving up and down. It's doing both. And I didn't even change anything to the code. Because I dealt with the spring as a vector function, and this is in 3D. Look, this is 3D, see? And wait. Let's do this. Ball.p, let's give it some initial z velocity. So negative 0.1. Let's see what happens there. What the heck? Look at that. 
It's a three-dimensional path. It, it's all good. Let's make that a little bit faster. 0.3. Oh, that's 31. That's bad. Check that out. Uh, if you're not impressed, I'm okay. You will be eventually. Okay. Look at that. Check that out. Same code. It's the same code. This is what's really great about adding in a three-dimensional element, a 3D visualization to the problem. We can see these cool things like that. We can explore models and see and put them in ways that we wouldn't normally do it. So there you go. This is just the beginning. We're going to do some more. So stay tuned.